Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's take a look at the latest film starring Bond, James Bond. Are you ready, money penny? That's right, Daniel Craig returns for his fourth outing as James Bond in Spectre, a film which tries to have it all. It ends up being so full of stuff that it ends up being pretty empty. You can sense the ambition of what the filmmakers were attempting here, but the storytelling and the overall tone go so wildly off course, the result is a James Bond film with very little originality or entertainment value. I know, I'm surprised to even be saying it myself. The only way to really dissect this disappointment is just to dive straight in and go in depth. So let's just do that. Part of what made this current incarnation of the James Bond series so fun is that in response to the cartoonish parody of Austin Powers and the blunt brutality of the Bourne movies, an attempt was made to take the quippy, gadget-happy gentleman spy into the new century with grounded action storytelling and narrative suspense, rather than relying on wacky gadgets and corny puns. This Bond was still Bond, but he was grittier, more muscular, and more likely to get blood on his tuxedo. His own blood. We didn't need recurring storylines or origin stories, but we got them anyway, and for the most part, that was okay. It still worked. It was a new, more mature Bond, and these installments were given even more grandeur by the major steps up in cinematography. I mean, look at Skyfall here, shot by perennial Oscar bridesmaid Roger Deakins. That was the only Bond film that I watched and thought to myself, hey, this could be a nominee for Best Picture. These movies take James Bond seriously. But when Bond takes himself this seriously, and then the filmmakers try to reinstate some of the loonier Bond traditions like seducing the widow of the man you just killed literally at that man's funeral? Making innuendos while pulling off her black mourning dress? I mean, when it's all played so straight without a wink or a smirk, it just ends up looking like this. Well, I can tell you that I don't trust you. Well, then you have impeccable instincts. If you don't leave now, we'll die together. I can think of worse ways to go. Then you're obviously crazy, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Yeah, like kind of skeevy, right? Bond also gets a car with lots of fun switches on it that do crazy things again. He's got a wordless henchman to deal with again. He's got a villain with certain affectations again, but it just doesn't feel right. Not with this Bond. Neither do the action scenes, which seem to favor shots that look cool versus shots that are actually exciting and visceral. Look at this car chase and tell me it doesn't look more like a car commercial. <laughs> uninspired it's being unoriginal consider a major plot thread which was done earlier this year and better in mission impossible rogue nation look at this scene in quantum of solace involving the climactic destruction of a villain's fortress hidden in the desert and then understand that there is a virtually identical set piece in specter there's also an attempt to cram in new contextual meaning to the last three films by saying that all of the villains of the previous three movies were all working for Spectre and that doesn't quite work or pay any dramatic dividends or really hold up under scrutiny and the film asks you to take some pretty weird leaps of narrative logic that don't seem to make any sense. For example, there's one scene where James Bond has been captured, okay? And he's being led to meet the villain bound and hooded. In one big action hero -y moment, he beats up the henchmen holding him, grabs their guns, and shoots them dead, then dramatically rips the hood off his head. And you're thinking, oh yeah, battle is on. Bond just turned the tables and now he's on the attack. So Bond continues into the whatever, the lair. He walks in and there's these arrows pointing the way to go. Arrows pointing which way to go. 
Now, were those arrows for the henchmen to follow as they led Bond in with a hood over his head? That was the plan, right? Lead him in? Or was the plan always that the henchmen were just gonna drop him off at the front door, take off his hood and be like, all right, well, bye, just follow the arrows and you'll get where you need to go. Because now, due to Mr. Itchy Trigger Finger, there's two dead bodies on the steps outside. Anyway, Bond starts walking down the hall, following these arrows, and he sees pictures on the wall. Okay, so these are clearly a message left for James Bond, meaning his hood was supposed to be off. The pictures are of Le Chief, the bad guy from Casino Royale, Silva from Skyfall, and you're thinking, okay, so these are all the guys that are supposed to be working for Spectre. Uh, uh. And then the next picture is of Vesper Lind. And, uh, huh, she didn't work for Spectre. Then he walks past a picture of this guy, a character who is working for Spectre, and we're back to a list of villains, and then he walks past a picture of Judy Dench, and I'm thinking, hey, whoever put this little photo essay together isn't grouping these together properly. And what's he trying to say here other than, hey, remember all these people from the other movies? Yeah, I do too. So then, Bond turns a corner, sees the villain there, and shoots at him. <laughs> Boom! Bulletproof glass. It's a trap. Okay, all right. Let me tell you a little something about traps. Traps are things you set for people you want to capture. They're out there running free and you want to bring them in here and capture them. It's not a trap, say, if you already have someone in captivity and lead him into a place bound and hooded. That's not a trap, that's just a meeting. Which again, means that there are two dead guys on the steps that didn't need to die and should probably be on their way home to their families right now. And if it sounds like I'm spending a lot of time harping on one scene, that's only because I'm illustrating the faulty logic found throughout the story. Oh, and that villain? Let me just say that Oscar winner Christoph Waltz is superb at Charming Menace. He won an Oscar for it, for Inglorious Bastards, and he's great during his unfortunately limited screen time. Much has been made about his character's true identity and keeping it a secret, and let me tell you, it could not matter less. You remember Star Trek Into Darkness? Right beforehand, the debate about Benedict Cumberbatch's character, was he Khan, was he not Khan? Listen, there comes a moment, just like the one in Star Trek, where Christoph Waltz tells you what his character's real name is with a great deal of gravitas, and it could not mean less to the story. You could take that five seconds out of the movie, and the rest would play the exact same way. So, what works in the movie? I can only think of two real things. There's a big fight early on between Dave Bautista, who for some reason they never allow him to talk despite how great he was as Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy, and Bond that brings the tension. And the big finale has a couple of pretty cool moments before blowing a kind of big raspberry in the denouement. Also, and there is a pretty sweet uh, long tracking shot that begins the opening sequence. So uh, three things. I gotta say, I'm shocked to be giving Spectre a small bag of popcorn. But there's really not much here to get excited about. Unless, uh, are you into tentacle porn? If so, then the bonkers opening title sequence may appeal to you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, don't Google it. You don't want to know. That does it for Movies That Pop. Please subscribe to see the rest of my reviews as they happen. Got some big ones coming up. Also, be sure to click the thumbs up icon if you like this review. And please, if you saw Spectre and want to voice your opinion, leave it in the comments below. In the meantime, I'm Colonel. The Colonel. Thanks for watching. Bye.